Okay. Lila. So you're going to get the spiel that everybody gets. They're going to get to hear it, which is funny. Okay. You know, they already know this. Uh, yeah. Like if you know what's coming next. <laughs> no, um, dislike if you don't like it, you know, that hurts my feelings. Anyway. This is a sword, okay? It's got a pointy end and a not so pointy end. Your goal is to stick the other guy with the pointy end before he sticks his in yours. Everything else is finesse. Okay. Everybody gets it. I'm going to give you a breakdown of the parts of the sword. I'm picking this because this has almost all the parts of the sword to work with. You, you have your blade. Whoop. Mm -hmm. Now you're holding up. It's going to be right here. Yeah. Now, the blade can be broken up into different parts. I've seen systems where there's 36 breaks, each one. Holy cow. No, 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 no. we're not going to do that. For the purpose of uh, the length of the blade, mm -hmm. you're, I'm going to tell you three. You're going to need to know two. Yeah. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And I haven't changed my pronunciation. I'm not going to, so there's, there's a bit of argument. The half, you have three parts. Mm -hmm. The third closest to the, the bass is the forte. Okay. Music, strong. No. Guess what the middle one is? Yes, it's mezzo forte. I was about to say mezzo because I think I'm music. Exactly. It's, it's mezzo forte, and that's medium strong. And the tip is called the foible, which just means weak. Okay. And what they're talking about is leverage. What I mean is, if I hold my sword out, okay, mm -hmm. smack the end of my sword with your sword. The end here. See? Go ahead. Hit. You can whack it hard. It's okay. These, these are... Okay. Do it again. You see how much movement? Yeah. The response is weak. Whack, whack down here. I actually bounced back farther. <laughs> I gained ground. Forte, meaning strong. So whenever possible, you want to parry, which means block, with the forte and attack with the foil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Easy peasy on the squeezes. Now, when you have a sword, most weapons we have are considered double-edged. Mm -hmm. The front edge is called your true edge. So whenever you pick up a sword, you go down like you're going gonna, gonna to cut a, a piece of cheese in half. Yeah! <laughs> the yeah side, that's your true edge. The back side is the false edge. Mm -hmm. Now, because you're a female, you will actually be able to do certain attacks later with the false edge easier because of your wrist structure. Believe so it or not. Like... Yes, actually, what will happen is, I'll get you a flash ahead, but there's a shot called the rap shot where it comes around and hits like this. Oh, I see. You're like The female oh, wrist realizes? can do that much easier yeah, than the male wrist. It's just uh, the physiology. But, okay, so that's parts of the blade. Now, most have a guard. If this had the little disc here, or the cup, mm -hmm. it would be a bell or a disc guard, depending on the shape. Yeah. This little bit's the ricasso. That's the space between the handle and the sharp edge of the blade. Mm -hmm. The cross piece is called either a cross piece or quillions. Mm -hmm. Knuckle duster. If there's a weight at the end, it's a pommel. Okay. Hilt is the part you grab. All right. you, I don't expect you to retain all this, because <laughs> it's all on this little camera here. So you could study your own stuff. I could study watching myself do it. Exactly. And if you watch yourself fight over time, you'll be able to see, oh, I need to fix this. Oh, he killed me that way. Yeah. You'll be able to chart your own progress, which is why I actually started the, the channel in the first place. Yeah. That and so I can occasionally go on rants about things. Because it's YouTube. You just, want me, you just want an excuse to rant. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. but <laughs> this beard used to be red. Now it's sort of stripified. But okay. So we're going to talk now. Okay. Nine basic guards. You saw the little video on this? I don't know how much attention you paid. But before we get to them, I have to make you stand. Okay. Before you can fight, you have to move. Before you can move, you have to stand. Uh, do you have a background in dance, martial arts, or anything like that? No. Marching band? No. Okay, cool. You may not know your foot, left foot from your right foot. That's I do. I, I, assume, I assume you're right-handed? Yeah. Groovy. Right foot forward. Left, almost perfect. No, no, you're, you're fine. I've seen stances before. Exactly. Like no, you're fine. The trick is, if you get nothing out of this, keep the toe pointed at the bad guy. 
because we're going to do advanced stuff later. And if you if you do the martial arts like horse stance, but I've seen I've done the stance before, but I've never done martial arts. Yet. No, that's fine. Um, a lot of people who, who you know, if you're playing lightsabers in the backyard, you've done the stance. But if you do it like this, and a lot of people will try, you can strain and damage this tendon, which is why certain kind of martial artists walk a little funny. When you're holding a sword, and you get your off hand, that's your, your left hand in this case, yeah. up in your HUD. Get it up in your heads up display. So like this? Yeah. You want this up here because you will eventually have options to do bad things to people with this. And I'll probably put a weapon or three in this different hand, including other swords, knives, whatever. Yeah. But if your hand is down here, you're going to forget it's there. Right. Up here, it's mentally equipped, just like any, any first-person shooter. Okay, this hand is there. It can do stuff. Excellent. When you move, okay, mm -hmm. to start, later you'll see screwy footwork, and my normal footwork is bizarre. And that's because my ankles are actually bent. So this is my feet pointing straight down if you were standing with your heels together. Okay. So I will tell you what to do, demonstrate during this, but then when you see me fight, you'll be like, oh, uh, you're not doing that. <laughs> That's because my feet don't always do that, and I've done many shady things, so we're not going to worry about that. Yeah, I don't think I want to. No. So, knees are lightly relaxed. If you lock your knees, you will fall over. You can actually pass out from standing with your knees locked. Slightly bent. Slightly bent. Arm up. Good. And that you've got nice, you want that 45 degree angle. Cool. Okay. You don't want to be like this, because it's like, please stab me. <laughs> if you see someone, oh! It's like my chest is forward, my death. Okay? As you can see, I take this very seriously. And because I take it very seriously, I mock every aspect. Okay. Now. Make this even more enjoyable for me. Alright. Hey, that's my goal. Now, you sheathe your sword like it's hung at your belt. So sheathe your sword. So, like this Now think about it. Would you be able to draw that comfortably with your right hand? No, so you so when you hang the sword, it left. hangs like this. So okay? hang on my left side. Right, because you want to be able to draw and pull. Now, part of understanding the length of a sword, a lot of people like these great big swords, especially anime fans. I'm looking at you, love. If you go Sephiroth, you know what I mean? He needs like a team of dudes to unsheathe that sword. I have one. <laughs> I have a traitor. Ten men behind you. Right. Yeah. Oh, ready the behemoth. Oh. Okay. <laughs> now, what you're going to do is cut out. And you're, oh, I, like this. What? But, you, well, that, that, that's generally your angle. You're going to slash upwards. It's going to be uncomfortable. Don't change your blade. Okay. So keep your wrist in that angle and pull up. Okay? Mm -hmm. That is first position. It's mind-numbingly uncomfortable. <laughs> but I realized, you got me into swords, we haven't did your footwork again. Quit tricking me, you're wiles. You're <laughs> wiles. Okay, to move. Getting back to movement. <laughs> move your foot that's closest to where you want to go. Okay. So, for you to yeah, come forward. Back, move your left foot, move right. forward. Yeah. Now, I am ambidextrous and dyslexic. That means left and right don't necessarily have a meaning to me that most people have. So I usually use landmarks. Got the road, you got the garage. Yeah. Move to the road. Excellent. You use the move to the garage. Now retreat. Advance. Your spacing is nearly perfect. Oh, I'm going to have fun with you. Okay. <laughs> That's the basics of movement. There's one other move I have to show you. You've heard of it. It's called the lunge. And whenever you see Olympic fencers, I can do this precisely once per practice. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> I believe <Go>. in you. <laughs> she I believes in the me, me that believes in her. Okay. I believe in you. You can do it. <laughs> a, a proper Olympic lunge looks something like this. Yeah, I've seen that before. Right. Here's the problem. I always train like there's another idiot. I'm using idiot to not swear. Okay? But, yeah. Exactly. Jim playing the role of the seven letter idiot. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Yay. So, if I say lunge, if you take a step 
comfortable step, comfortable back. Mm -hmm. It's just a step and a half. If your knee is ever at 90 degrees, you're going too far. Never, ever have your knee past your toe. So, what I mean is, if you do that, you can damage your knee, you can damage your ankle. Mm -hmm. So always catch, okay? So that's... You're right. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, fast. You do? Well, See, you're, you you're like I said, you're very intelligent. You just have to build your competence and your confidence off of it. And we're going to do that. That's what fencing does, amongst other things. Yeah. Now, getting back to the thing. First position. Excellent. And she snapped. She got first, like, right away. A little higher. It's going to be uncomfortable. First should be uncomfortable. Yeah. And the purpose of first is if it's a quick draw. You learn that. So you just get Like, right? uh, yeah. I watched watch the video. Good. <laughs> the, you learn first so that if you're ever in a hallway, a narrow place, you know, because people are like, ha, oh, they do these big wide, and I do it yeah, too, everybody, ha. Oh. Yeah, especially in the other just... Behold. And that's a great move because it forces people back. It does. But if you're in a narrow hallway, you, you, can, have you thump your sword and you get stabbed in the throat for being an idiot. <coughs> so first, boom. Now second, we're going to rotate 90 degrees from first. So extend it to first. Now rotate 90 degrees. And you're going to bend your elbow a bit because you don't want to train with locked elbows. Right. And this is going to reach around and stab me. Okay. Now, second is really cool because most people, yeah, it's it's got that little hip pivot, and you extend. There's there's an arc to it. Yeah. So what that does is just stab my arm in, in second. Isn't that nice? It goes around. It naturally pulls your shoulder back a little bit. It does. So it's a lovely counter punch. Now, now, go into third. It's like this? Yeah. Third is home. Everybody's like, ah, oh, third is nice. You're going to want to extend. Okay. Right. And just poking the shoulder. Good. Go ahead. The calibration is pretty good. That's home. Now, from third, if I'm trying to poke you, go into second. Right now, go into second. Now, keep your tip. We're going to talk about this. Right. Tip stays online with, with what we're fighting with this week. Okay. You see what happens there? Yeah. Now, if you're really dastardly and yeah, have Quilliams, what, what, if I catch you with the Quillian, it holds it there a little bit to give you time to come make your day back. Right. And we won't ruin your show. Yeah. <laughs> so, when you drill second, drill from third. You know what so I'm saying? Like... So, the motion is, because what you're doing is your catch and counter. Right. So it's like it's this and then jab, right? It's per your yeah, uh, uh, thrust is the word you're looking for. A jab is a punch. Same idea though. Yeah. Good one. That's this, the first thing I think of is jab. No, know. no, that's fine. We still we're still okay, cool. Uh, the other thing, this is what I like to call this is per my last email. Have you ever heard somebody be snarky about? You know, I sent you an email. What's going on? And they're like per my last email, and then they tell them what they did wrong again. No, I didn't. Okay, extend at me. So I, I did something. I already told you, you're going to die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so it comes in going, you're, you're, this is outside. And I'm going to tell you why we're parrying this way later. And I love how your blade auto tracks. That makes me happy. She's like, no, you're coming with me. I'm going to keep my tip online. I'm long and lean and no. Let's give me hopping. Okay. I have some, like, I have some soap stuff. No, no, you're good. You're good. Okay. Some preservation. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I will never scold someone for a speech impediment. They could do a I super. I can't talk today. You could do a super cut of all the things where I said what. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now fourth is a little different. So get get up into third again. Okay. Now you're gonna bend at the elbow, and you want your wrist inside in. Okay. okay you know what? Here. Here. Right, so but, yeah, because, okay, if second is doing something parrying out this way, yeah. fourth parries out that okay, way. Okay. Now, I have to be a little... the opposite of second? Yes. All right. So it will start from third, too. It is a little more difficult for ladies who learn fourth because you have to practice in a mirror to make sure that the edge of your presented chest but if you go see if you go out here let me show you. 
go out here, I can easily come back in. Yeah. So what you want is your parries to be minimal. Just enough. So it'll so be like something a, like that. Like a slight. Right. It's it's I what if you watch me fencing when I'm really in the zone, try you know, I'll be fourth second, fourth second. I'm I'm extended and this is all that's going on. First, you know. <laughs> no, but and then it's pop, pop, you know. Yeah. So those are the the uh, linear guards. Now I got to talk about why they're set up this way. You have a center line. It runs from between your eyes, straight down your body, to where your legs meet. Mm-hmm. You always parry out from the center line. What I mean by that? Okay. If you stab me, you're aiming for my heart. You're going to stab me through a heart. Okay. Your for a few seconds. Oh, I have some of that in me. Anyhow, and I tried to parry you like this. Okay, if I try to parry that second, I'm actually forcing myself wrong. You have all this space where if you're advancing, the trajectory can still hit me. Yeah. But, again, you're trying to move me through my heart. <laughs> if I go into fourth, I only have to move you this far, and I'm safe. Right. And then, by doing that, I'm closed, I can reach back out from forth in the thrust, and pop you. Right. Okay? So that's what we're going to do for that. Alright. That is mo- a lot of strip fencing. Like, if you're we're using a foil, that's a lot of foil fighting. But, we fight in the round and we fight naturally, so somebody might try to be like, yeah, And then, like, that doesn't do me any good. No. So, if, cut this way. Fifth. <laughs> now I'm going to show you something cool. Sixth. Seventh. Eighth. And it's okay. They don't. Yeah. It's called a figure eight because you draw it in the air. Mm-hmm. You could drill with the system. You can. It becomes a two-person drill. So if I'm sheath, you're sheath. We are starting just out of each other's reach. This way we don't hurt each other. Okay. Yeah. Sheath a weapon. Cut. Five. Six. No, oh, this is where it gets tricky. Counter it. Seven. Eight. Or. Neck. Five. Neck. Five. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what, what you're what you're doing. That's, and what what you're gonna do is you're gonna get something. That makes it a little bit easier for me to remember. Like, go for a neck. Go for the thigh, go for the neck, go for the thigh, you know? The easiest way is we could just get you a chunk of PVC that's really light, and you can practice with that as a sword simulator. Yeah. You know, because that's what I used to teach you for. But, because you and Jim will be, this is what I call playing patty cake. You know what I mean? Like, play patty cake. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven. Okay, you're close, we'll get to it. I'm, I'm, more I'm impressed. almost there, I'm almost you're there. You're almost there, and almost you're there. taking it. She's really good. Yeah, she is. She's really good. Lila's mom, she's really good. <laughs> I lost the word Joe. <laughs> well, I have a guy named Joe, and I have a woman named Joe. <laughs> and there's a lot of JoJo going on, and I don't want to make obscure anime references to break your daughter. I do not like JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, though. That's fine. That's fine. I don't like the I don't like the art. No, 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 no. Yeah, I agree. They look all freaky, but <laughs> it does make for a wonderful in joke for a It does. It now really there does. is a ninth guard. Mm-hmm. The ninth guard. Before we do that, we have to go back to your footwork because instead right. of being here, you're going to start here, upright, chin up, chest out, heel here. You're, so like this. You, uh, your toes still pointed, but they, they are touching. So the heels have to meet, right? Right, or just barely. You want about a, a foot's width apart. Um, yeah. yeah, that's close enough. I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it also breaks down to how your, your hips move. I'm, I'm not very good at measurements. That's okay. So. Your toe is still pointed at the bad guy, even more so. Okay. Your sword, go go into fourth. So this one. Four, four, look at me. Okay, here. I, it, I don't... Mirror? Let me see. Does that help? Yes, it does. Okay, tip pointed, always pointed at me. Right. Now extend straight out and aim at my neck. That is the ninth position. Don't lean. You're still upright. And you don't attack much with the body. You attack with the footwork. Meaning, I go here. I want to poke you. I do this. 
Okay. Now, let me explain why. Between your foot and my foot is called the line of attack. Mm -hmm. That is the line the Italians, the, the Germans, the French... All the swordsmen. No, almost all the swordsmen. Almost all the swordsmen. You control the line, and then you kill them. Right. The Spanish, being mathematicians, went, wait a second. If I am standing on the line, all things being equal, I got a 50% chance of dying. Right. So what they do is they took the line, made it a diameter. Mm -hmm. That's a circle. This is the Spanish magic circle. <laughs> have you ever heard that term? And what you do is you put your foot and attack tangentially. I'm carefully not skewering you. So if I'm within reach of you, mm -hmm. and I do this, then you're attacking me. You and me. you're dead. You're on the last man on the line dies. Yeah. So that's where that goes in. Once you've been doing this a long time, we'll play with it. It usually requires longer weapons. It's, it's sort of a special. And that effect. honestly makes sense because you have to have a decent distance apart, and then and, then and it's very, that's more dual. But you'll learn it. So you, what I do is I learn different styles. And then I buffet the pieces I like out of them, and I just disregard the rest. Right. So that is pretty much the whole system okay. for that. The problem is switch hands. Switch weapon hands. Now switch your feet, because we're going to fight Dominant. I didn't even tell you the stances. I'm so excited about this, I didn't tell you the stances. We are fighting what's called the offensive stance. There are four stances. Two stances, two variants. I'm going to show you what they look like. Offensive stance. That puts the metal between the meat. This is where we live. Right. Defensive stance. The sword is back and your offhand is forward. You're actually jumping ahead. There you go. Okay. Now, there's a, a variant called scorpion. Scorpion? That's what they call this because you look like a scorpion. And it looks... Sexy. And you know what you get <laughs> from Scorpion? You get to look sexy. <laughs> and you can kind of snipe over a shield a little bit. That but is true. But like other than that, that, it's really, really useless. And the fourth stance is what you accidentally fell into, which is crossover. Where your feet are in normal. And what you do... Like no, no. What you're doing... I'm like losing a hit, Okay. Take, take offensive stance. Mm -hmm. Now pivot your back arm forward. So if you're fighting and you can move like this, you trick your opponent into thinking you're in defensive stance. But really, when you want to, you're in offensive. See, it's a trick style. But I teach everybody to recognize it. Mm -hmm. That's footwork games. You, sh you won't have to deal with that much for a while, at least until Trey shows up. Her legs work better than mine. I'll admit it. Okay. So, left-handed, she the well, sword. right-handed for me. No, left-handed. Off-hand. Off-hand. You will be, if you learn both hands at the same time, you will be ambidextrous. Okay. So, draw in first. Okay, thrust. Rotate down into second. Thrust. Now, don't lean. Don't get in the habit of leaning because you need to learn your reach. Right. And if you constantly reach, you don't have that later. Right. So you have to keep upright, have to pop those short. You see me constantly, because <laughs> my posture is squat off the field. I don't have your posture. Well, this will actually help fix it. Yeah. Back, it's confident, it opens up your airways, lets you breathe better, gives you a better field of view, mm -hmm. and more reach. Good posture is everything. Okay. Boom. So then you reach. Okay? Good. Third. And it's going to feel a little awkward. Fourth. There you go. Tip at me. And extend. And we can rotate from fourth into fifth. Oh, that's actually. Seven. Eight. Okay? And it's going to take time to learn those. But you need to drill both hands equally. Because the first thing that's going to happen to you in a lot of bouts is... Huh. We say lay on or start or something. You stab me here. What? Stab me in the arm. Oh, I've lost the use of my arm. Right. And then you have to use the other. And then people, you know, if you watch the Princess Bride, they go, ha ha, I have something to tell you. I'm not left handed. You know? <laughs> the Princess Bride. The 
knows the spot? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm not left-handed. That's right. I don't know. You don't know. I'm not, I'm not left-handed. You Oh, go. I'm, I'm, now I gotta watch it again. Anyway. I love that movie. <laughs> okay. I will talk about the conventions a little bit. When we fence in the historical fencing guild, this has nothing to do with other organizations. A shot from the pinky, well, any shot to the hand, all the... If you hit the hand, okay, not poke it in the hand. Boom. You lose the use of the hand, make a fist. So let go, let go the sword. I'm holding the sword. Okay. Make a fist. You can still parry, you can do blocks with your arm, but you can't hold anything. If I poke you in the arm, loss of the, loss arm. Of the arm. And they have to use the other. Up, right. right. Up to the, uh, you ever see the baseball shirts where the sleeve color changes right like this? Uh, you just so bear with me yes. That, this, the shoulder shot will disobey, kill, it takes the arm. Mm -hmm. A shot from the pinky toe, if I manage to be like, oh, poke, poke your toe, you lose your foot. <laughs> Just because you're not going to be able to stand with it. And that goes up to the, the sides of, you know, like underwear line, for lack of a better word. <laughs> now, it's uh, delicacies here, but... Yes, I know. Shot to the torso mm -hmm. is a kill. Shot to the neck, head, face, kill. Back to the neck as well. A draw cut, anyway, yeah, absolutely. A draw cut or stab to the armpits is fatal because of the... Uh, very close to your heart. Right. And a draw cut to the thigh. If I get a draw cut on the inside of the thigh, so that means if I slice here, I don't even talk about draw cuts. That's going to open up your femoral artery, and that and, will be an instant death. Yeah, that's very Well, what happens is the blood pressure goes from whatever you have pretty much to zero. That's an anime-style death. Just psh, draw. <laughs> At least for the purposes of how we function. Yeah. Okay. So... With that. I'm talking about kinds of attack. How can we attack with people with these things? No, we're, <laughs> for now we're going to use the sword as a sword. Although, once we're in armor, you know, a knuckle duster is called a knuckle duster for a rent. No, man, it would be good, Nick. Do you, you like know. block with this part? Yeah, you block, you can block with that. You, somebody with that, it, it's real close. But we're, if a stab is called a thrust, pretty much everything else is a type of cut. A blow where I just buy, you know, open it. Like that? Yeah. Right, right, smack. You, you, you. There you go. Now, you don't want to hit much harder than that. We'll talk about calibration later. Right. But that is a blow or a cut. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two cuts. There's a push cut, which if I just go by here. It's like a graze. It, it's, as you can see, it's going to feel like graze. Like, when you start, you take everything. After you've done it a while, and you're, you're like, okay, you can say, okay, that's just a push cut. I love that. She's like, no. That's called <laughs> voiding, and it makes me happy. Okay. Well, like, I'm just, like, I, self-preservation, you also got to do that with, in a battle. You wanna <coughs> choose, even if it's fake, you want to choose it. Exactly. Every time. But, good. A draw cut, you feel the difference? A push cut, you barely feel. A draw cut. Yeah, like push cut, it just feels like a graze, but then when you're going back, you you're, can actually You're feel slicing that. steak. You can really feel that. Right. Think about when you ever cut meat. Yeah. It's the pull back that really digs in. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Those, uh, the other one, when we're in full armor, ar uh, yeah, armor. You know, <laughs> I thought I had speech impediment, did it have <laughs> speech impediment around my lack of it. The pommel strike where you bonk with the back. That's... Like, yeah. Back. That's... Advanced, and if things go really, really wrong. So we're not going to play much about that. Okay. But for now, what you're going to focus on is practicing your guards. Mm -hmm. Okay? We're going to practice the offline guards. Right. And make sure your footwork's really good. Well, point control. You get a ball, you get a small target, you hang it, and you poke it. Boop, boop, boop. Boom. That will practice. You want to get one of the best things to use is a garage parking tennis ball. You know the ones that's already on the string. Yeah. You just hang it up and you practice poking it. You can poke it with like a yardstick. It doesn't really matter. Sword simulating objects can change. Where you just boom, 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 and you want to be able to hit it. You want to be able to poke it. You want to be able to get it moving and then hit it when it's moving. Yeah. And you're gonna do all that. And you practice that, because you can do that at home. Calibration will work on, on how hard you are stabbing people. 
Because you got to be able to be moving at full speed. And then be able to stop at the right And Well, and I, I could poke you, but I don't want to be like, BRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRR